Hey everyone, welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Mindy Banks. I'm the Flip Flop Chef. Today we're going to have a deluxe cooking blender class. It's been about five years since I recorded the first deluxe cooking blender class and I've learned so much more and made hundreds of other recipes in this blender and I have so much more to share with you now. So feel free to go back and watch the other one if you like. You'll learn a few other things that maybe I'm not sharing today. If this is your first time um, watching one of my videos, I hope you'll click the subscribe button. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, let me know where you're watching from and if you're catching this live or if you're watching a replay. So today I'm going to show you so many things that you can do with Pampered Chef's Deluxe Cooking Blender. So while we're here together, I'm going to show you how to make salsa, a smoothie, a margarita, Alfredo sauce, and then I have a bonus recipe making brownies. So you are not going to want to miss this. I have so much to share with you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Also, if you are new to my channel, I hope that you will also subscribe to my recipe community. You can find that by going to theflipflopchef.com, clicking the button at the top of that page. It'll redirect you to the group. I have thousands of other recipes, hundreds of videos, and a giveaway every single Friday. So are you guys ready to learn about the Deluxe Cooking Blender? I hope you are because I have so much to share. I love all of Pampered Chef's appliances. I use most of them every single day, but the Cooking Blender can just do so much. Like it blows me away when I think of all the things that I can make in the blender. So let's first talk about what you get when you purchase the blender, what accessories come with it, and then there's some other things that you can add on to it later if you decide to do that. So with your deluxe cooking blender, you're going to get the blender and the blender container. This is a smart blender, so it has pre-programmed settings. That doesn't mean that you can't use this like a regular blender because you can. We have a custom blend option where you can put your drinks in here or your smoothies or your milkshakes or whatever and just use that custom blend button like a regular blender. But because it's a smart blender, it does so much more and takes you away from the cooking process. So a lot of these recipes are hands off. You start them and you can walk away and do something else, wait for the beep, come back and finish it up. Now I have another video on my YouTube channel comparing Pampered Chef Selects Cooking Blender with the Vitamix. It's one of my most viewed videos and it will really help you understand the differences between the two products. I never thought anything could be better than my Vitamix. Boy, was I wrong. So definitely be sure to check that out. But let's go ahead and get started. One of the things that you need to know about this blender is that it does have a heating element built right in. So this is a smart blender. And so this piece has to plug into here, just like you would plug something into the wall. And so it is pre-programmed, has a heating element, and it's not gonna heat just by friction. It's going to actually heat up the food that you're cooking if you're cooking something and maintain those temperatures so that you don't burn anything. So let's talk about the other accessories that come with your blender. So of course, you're going to get a deluxe cooking blender cooking guide. This is like your Bible for this product. It's gonna tell you how to use every single feature. So let's take a little look inside here. I wanna tell you what the pre-programmed settings are so that I don't forget to mention something. I'm just gonna read it off. So we have a heated wash setting, which I have a separate video taking you through that entire process. It does take several minutes to heat up the water, and then it takes a couple minutes to actually wash the inside of the blender. So that is one big difference in this one and the Vitamix. So with the Vitamix, you just add soap and water, and you just turn and pulse to swish the soapy water around. You rinse it out and dry it off. With this one, it actually heats the water like a dishwasher. So you've got hot soapy water cleaning the blender. When it's done, you pour out the soapy water, you rinse it out and dry it off and it's ready to go. So there's a separate video that you can see on my channel showing you how to do the heated wash setting. We also have a smoothie setting, which you guys are gonna get to see today. We have an alternative milk setting. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you about the alternative milk that I've made ahead of time so that you guys can check it out. So this is oat milk and I have this in our um, two quart quick stir pitcher. This shows you that it fills it just over that one quart line. You could put two batches of your alternative milk in the two quart pitcher because the two quart fill line is right here. So you still have a couple of inches of space where you could add a little bit more liquid. So this is oat milk and the instructions on how to make alternative milk are in the cooking guide. So it tells you if you need to, what you're soaking, how long you're soaking it for. So this means that you can make, um, let me just look and tell you because I will forget something. <laughs> so I want to just read through the list. So you can make almond milk, 
cashew milk, coconut milk, combo milk, macadamia nut milk, oat milk, rice milk. You can even make horchata, which is a delicious cinnamon milk drink. I think you guys will love it. I have videos on my channel showing you how to make almond milk, and so you can watch that one to learn more about how I made the oat milk. It's the same process, just a little bit different instructions. We also have a grind setting. The grind setting is phenomenal because you can use that to make your own peanut butter. So I took one container <clears throat> of peanuts. So this is about three cups of dry roasted, um, these are honey roasted peanuts. I got this at Aldi. Just pour it straight in the blender and that's the only ingredient that you need. It takes two minutes and 20 seconds and you get this beautiful pourable peanut butter. We're gonna use this in our brownies later. So we'll talk more about the peanut butter don't think that we're not going to talk more about that because it's so, so good and it smells so good, tastes so good, and you could use it a variety of different ways. Other than things like grinding up nuts for nut butter, you can grind wheat berries to make your own flour. You can grind cheese. So if you want to shred your cheese, throw it in the blender. Um, now it's not going to be shredded. It's still going to be in chunks and it is awesome. You can use it for Parmesan cheese and even soft cheese like mozzarella or um, cheddar, Colby Jack, things like that. I wouldn't use it for fresh mozzarella because it's not dry enough to put in the grind setting. You can also um, grind up oatmeal. So one of the things that I um, use my Vitamix for the most and the reason that I could justify the cost was when my twins were babies, one of them had reflux and I didn't want to use, I've heard some bad things about the baby cereal on the shelf at the time. And so I thought, well, I don't know what I'm going to feed him to keep him from getting reflux. And a friend of mine said, you just need to get a Vitamix, grind up organic oatmeal, and you can put it in his bottle and thicken it up, and it will help with the reflux. So that was how I justified purchasing that Vitamix, and that's how I used it pretty much exclusively to make nut butter and grind up oatmeal and make smoothies. This one can do so much more. Um, I actually ground up oatmeal recently in the blender to make these really good um, peanut butter bites. And so I ground up the oatmeal so my kids didn't know oatmeal was in there. Because you know how kids are. <laughs> they hear the ingredients and they're like, oh, no, 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 I don't like that. But guess what? He loves them. And I have one kid who doesn't like peanut butter. So um, the one that does really enjoyed them and he has no idea that there's oatmeal in it. So I'm counting on you guys not to tell him, okay? Um, you can also use this to make hummus and other dips on the grind setting. So this is not just for smoothies. You can use it for so many different things. So that's the grind setting. The next setting is soup, and I don't have an example to show you here today. However, we're going to use the sauce setting to make an Alfredo sauce, and they do work a little bit similar, and I have several things that I made on the sauce setting to tell you about a little bit later on, but the soup setting is awesome. If you like having blended soups, you can use this for that, and if you're like, I don't really like blended soups um, unless it's like tomato basil, then what I recommend is combining this with another powerhouse in your Pampered Chef kitchen, the deluxe multi-cooker. Um, I have several recipes on my, um, in my recipe community showing you how to make a tortilla soup where you cook chicken and add some other vegetables into the quick cooker or your deluxe multi-cooker or your Instapot if that's what you're using in your kitchen. And you pour the soup mixture from the blender over the top. And I also have a minestrone soup recipe there that's phenomenal. And it also is using a blended soup poured into your multi-cooker um, over some ground beef and some other vegetables to make it really, really hearty. So don't discount that soup feature if you don't like blended soups. Um, there's a heated puree setting, and I don't have an example for you today, but if you have a baby and you need to make baby food, this is also a great setting for that. Now, when I had my Vitamix, I was like, well, I have this, and now my babies are eating baby food. I'm going to make their own baby food. The difference between this blender and the Vitamix when it comes to making baby food is I had to pre-cook all of that food before I put it in the Vitamix. But with the heated puree setting in Pampered Chef Selects Cooking Blender, you do not have to pre-cook the vegetables. Isn't that amazing? So it's going to cook them and it's going to blend them for you. The next setting is our sauce setting, and I have several examples. We'll talk about some of those um, when our Alfredo sauce is going because um, it's going to start and stop, start and stop because it's going to be heating and stirring. Hang tight, I'll explain that. Um, our jam setting. You guys, making jam in the Pampered Chef blender is definitely my jam. <laughs> so I have some strawberry jam here, and this is delicious. So easy to make. All you have to do is take a pound of strawberries, rinse them off, cut them in half, throw them in the blender, add a little bit of jarred pectin or whatever pectin that you're using. Follow the instructions here um, to make sure in the guide to make sure that you're using the right kind of pectin. And then when that st stage is done, 
you'll start it, it'll blend and heat and stir for a while, and then it's going to tell you to add, and at that point you're gonna add in your sugar. Then you press the wheel to start, it's gonna start finishing up that sugar, uh, finishing up that jelly, and when it's done, it's done. All you have to do is pour it from your blender container into one of these make and take mason jars. I usually let it cool about five to 10 minutes before I pour it into the jar just because it's super hot, like almost boiling hot, and then transfer it over to our jar. Now these are make and take mason jars. They were made so that you could um, put salad and other food in there and then have another compartment on the top where you could put dressing or toppings, but they are great for storing your jelly. You can also use them for um, peanut butter and even sauces in the freezer is where I put mine to freeze like I make several batches of sauce and put it in the freezer So we'll talk more about some of those ideas a little bit later on, but this is strawberry jelly Three ingredients and I know I've said jam and jelly jam is made from fruit jelly is made from juice So it's jam so go with me if I have, if I have confused you on that But you'll you can't notice um, in the video, but there is absolutely not a single strawberry seed left behind and that's the really cool thing is our blender will pulverize them and they're not detectable. All right, and then we have custom settings. So we have a custom blend setting. There's a milkshake recipe chart, a nice cream recipe chart and a frozen drink recipe chart. So, so many different recipes in here. Some of the other ones that I want you guys to know about, you have um, blackberry cashew smoothie bowl, green mango coconut smoothie bowl, um, fresh ground whole wheat pancakes, roasted red pepper and walnut dip, Butternut squash soup, broccoli cheddar soup with cheddar biscuits, and I make those in my air fryer. Nacho cheese sauce, chocolate cherry skillet cake. Oh my goodness, there's so many um, other things that you can make. But let's keep moving along here because there is so much to share. So the accessories that come with your blender. You're going to get this piece. This is for high altitude areas. It is not meant to be used for overfilling your blender. But if you live in a high altitude, altitude um, area, then you're gonna put this in the top, it squeezes right on, and it's going to keep this from spilling over. There are two maximum um, fill lines. So for hot liquids, it's a six cup a maximum fill line. For cold liquids, it is a seven cup fill line. Please take notice of those. Pamper Chef does not recommend doubling like your jam recipes and things like that. Um, just make one batch, let your blender, get your blender clean, or just go ahead and start making another one. Don't double um, a lot of these recipes, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So this is your spillover guard for high altitude areas, not overflowing your blender. Now, you're also going to get this Easy Clean Kitchen Brush. Some of you guys are gonna already have one of these. This is awesome to clean um, dishes in your sink, but also to clean out your sink, around your sink drain. You're gonna get this in case you ever have something that's stuck around those blades. You can reach in and scrub it out if you need to. I almost never need to use that. I honestly, I, I don't even know when I have used that in the blender. <laughs> and so, but I always hesitate to say, I have never done something when I'm not 100% sure. So very, very rarely we'll go with that. Now this piece, a lot of people throw this away or forget about it. So when you're unpacking your blender, take out this little Ziploc bag Put it in your silverware drawer, okay? The reason I'm telling you to put it there is because it doesn't tend to turn into a junk drawer. But this is a replacement plug for your deluxe cooking blender. So it's a noise reduction plug, and it goes right here. It comes with one installed, and it gives you a second one. You wanna change it every 500 cycles. Nobody's gonna keep up with how many cycles that they have made. I'll tell you how you know when it's time to change. First is your blender is gonna start sounding louder. If your blender starts sounding louder than normal, check right here, and you'll probably see little black flecks of like silicone. It's because that plug is deteriorating and you need to change it. It's very easy, you just pull this out, put the new one in, and then you're ready to go another 500 cycles. We do sell this as a replacement part, part it is just a few dollars. So that is your noise reduction plug. And then you're also going to get this nut bag. This is a straining bag, so if you are making the alternative milk, so like I made this oat milk earlier, I soaked the oat milk for 30 minutes in one cup of water. Then I added the soaking water and the oats into the cooking blender and added, I think, four cups of water. Don't hold me to that. And I added salt, vanilla, and agave to this and blended it on the alternative milk setting. And it takes about four to five minutes for that to happen. And then I poured it through this mesh bag and just strained it out in our um, 
quick stir pitcher and then there was a little bit um, like the corner of this was full of the ground up oatmeal you just toss that in the trash now some people get creative and do things with their um, their leftover um, oats or the nuts that they've ground up I have not done anything with that um, myself so those are the accessories that you get <clears throat> excuse me with your deluxe cooking blender and we do sell replacement parts for almost everything. The base, of course, is considered the main part, so there's no replacement for that. But you can also purchase extra containers, which you'll notice I have several of them here. So are you guys ready to make some salsa? Let's get cooking, right? So I know that I covered a whole, whole lot of information in a really short period of time there. But I hope you guys are still with me and excited to learn more about this blender. <clears throat> so for this, we are going to add all of our ingredients right into the blender container and we're going to use the grind setting so i'm going to take an onion so i went ahead and peeled this i'm just going to quarter it and toss it into the blender then we're going to add some cilantro and i have this in our um, herb keeper so i'm going to pull this out and um, i usually have some scissors over here but i'm just going to tear that i use the stems and all you guys um, but if you don't want to use the stems, don't worry about it. Um, the cool thing about this is it's like a vase for your fresh herbs. And there's a little window here so that you can look and see when you need to change out the water. <coughs> Excuse me. I inhaled something a few minutes ago and I haven't recovered yet. All right, so we've got our cilantro and our onions. We're going to add some jalapenos. And I meant to grab some tongs. Let me grab those real quick. All right, now I usually use fresh jalapenos. And I could have sworn that I had some in my uh, fridge and I cannot find them. So they probably got used. So I'm just gonna put uh, a handful of those in there, more or less depending on how spicy you like things. I'm gonna add a couple of cloves of garlic and we're gonna use our garlic peeler to peel the, oops, hang on, to peel the skin right off of the garlic. So I've got three garlic cloves here. You're gonna put your garlic clove inside of the garlic peeler, roll it on the countertop like this, and it separates the peel from the garlic. If I can just keep it in my hands, right? All right. Two, you can do more or less garlic, again, based on your taste. Now this garlic, or excuse me, this salsa recipe is not a cooked or roasted salsa. This is just a fresh salsa recipe. So. Now, we're going to take two cans of tomatoes. So these are diced tomatoes, and I do not drain them. I want that liquid. So we're going to put both of these cans right in. Dump these in the blender. Let's see. And then we're going to put the lid on it. And we may need to use the tamper, but I kind of feel like we're not going to need to. Twist, twist, twist. All right. Pour both of these in there. Oops, where am I going with this? <clears throat> Keith loves this salsa. This is his favorite salsa. And I even went to the trouble of canning salsa. And um, he likes this recipe better. So I'm like, well, it's so much easier <laughs> than, you know, cooking things and going through the process of canning. So, all right, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn this to the grind setting and I'll have my tamper close by. If I need it, we'll use it, but let me just go ahead and press the start button there and we're gonna make some salsa. Super quick, super easy. We're not gonna need that two minutes. See, it's two minutes and 20 seconds on that particular setting. You just need a few seconds with this blender. I'm going to blend it just a tiny bit longer. I don't want to pulverize it completely. All right, and if you like it more chunky, then what you can do is you can save one of those cans and pour it in after you have already blended it so that you have one can of the chunky tomatoes. All right, so we'll set that in there. And let's see. An accessory that you can purchase separately, um, doesn't come with your blender, is this long skinny scraper. And I like this because it reaches down all the way to the bottom. I'm going to pour this in my, hang on, I don't want to splash this on my caramel. 
because that would not taste good. <laughs> I'm going to move that out of the way. It was a little too close to comfort, right? The caramel and the salsa are probably Keith's favorite blender recipes. So he is always excited when he comes home, he smells caramel, and sees the new fresh jar of salsa. Usually I can fit this whole jar in here, so we're going to see. Almost. All right. Whoops. That's my alarm to pick up my kids from school. <laughs> All right. So I'm recording this while they're at school today. And you guys are going to get to watch this later. So sorry, I forgot to turn off that blender. So at this point, what we would do is I would put three cups of water in here, literally add a drop of dish soap, and put the lid back on, put it on the heated wash setting. But we don't have time for that right now, so I'm going to set this aside. And you can watch the video on how to use the heated wash setting a little bit later on. Okay? Now, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. I want to help you and answer those questions for you, and I will answer them after the video. So the next recipe I want to show you guys is our smoothie, and we're going to use our deluxe cooking blender smoothie attachment. So this is also something that is sold separately, and I have all of our ingredients prepped out here. So let me go ahead and tell you how you use this. So you're not going to take this piece and put it straight in here. It will not work that way. You have to have this attachment. You place this here, and just like that, you're gonna get several other pieces that come with this. You're gonna get a lid, you're gonna get your cup, this is the actual blending container, and then this is your straw. So we're going to make the smoothie recipe that comes on the card. This is for the strawberry banana smoothie, but I'm gonna make it with raspberries because that's what I have in my fridge. And so this piece here actually twists on to the bottom of the smoothie cup, and it has measurement markings on the inside. So I use that to measure out our raspberries. So one cup of raspberries or strawberries. We are going to add one banana, and I will tell you, <clears throat> oops, excuse me, let me get this cutting mat. It's, Sticking. So this is one banana. You want to make sure that you are not overfilling your blender container. And so if you're putting too much in here, it's not going to have enough space to blend, and you're not going to be happy with the result. I will also tell you that this container, this attachment, is really meant to be used with fresh fruit versus frozen fruit. I'm going to put a quarter cup of Greek yogurt, just use this, I didn't have a scraper here, and we're going to add a quarter cup of orange juice. Do you see how little juice you need for a smoothie? So if you're one of those people, like me, who doesn't measure their ingredients, when you're making a smoothie or a milkshake, you really do need to pay attention to that, or you're going to have to add a ton of extra ice cream or a ton of extra fruit um, with your um your drink to make it the right consistency. Now I'm gonna use a little stainless steel scoop to scoop out a tablespoon or, or teaspoon or so of my pea protein. This is an enrichable product from Pampered Chef. And then we're gonna add a little bit of honey to this. There we go. Put our, we're gonna screw this lid on just like that. And I just sort of tap everything down so it's in the right place. Oops. Let me see here. There we go. And you hear that noise where it locks it in? I'm going to press cancel, press the smoothie tap, smoothie button. And this is a one minute cycle. We'll see if we need the whole minute or not. Take this off because we're done with that. 
as I always tell you, if I struggle with something when I'm on camera, it's because I'm not in front of it. So I try to turn things so that you guys can see them, and that's why sometimes things look difficult. It's very easy to take that on and off. All right, the next recipe I'm going to show you is margarita. So if you like margaritas, you're going to love this. So we are using uh, Mr. and Mrs. T's strawberry margarita mix, and we have some Bacardi rum. So you can make this a virgin if you like, and just make it with um, extra mix, or you can add in the rum. It's totally up to you. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the ice in here. So a single single serving is one and a half cups of ice. So we're doing two. So this is um, three cups of ice and the recipe's on the back of this bottle. So I'm gonna loosen this up. Our insulated bowls make amazing ice buckets. This ice has probably been in here for almost an hour. It took me a while to prep for this video. So I have a lot to share with you guys. All right, so we've got our three cups of ice. I'm gonna put um, eight ounces. Whoops, I didn't measure that very good. A little bit more. Eight ounces of our juice, strawberry mix. And again, this is for two drinks. And then we have three ounces, so for two drinks of rum, add that in. When you're making any frozen drink, make sure you don't blend it very long because if you do, the longer you blend it, the more friction that builds up. The custom blend is not a heated setting and so there's no heating element being used, but if you spin things fast enough and long enough, they're going to create heat, and I don't want you to warm up your smoothie. It won't be the way that you want it to be. I have another video showing you how to make this start to finish again, so if you want to go watch just that, you can, but I'm using the custom blend. drinking a, a frozen drink that has big chunks of ice because you can't get through a straw. But look at this. So this is how you make the perfect margarita. I don't think I have room in my fridge for this. I do not. Well, here. Let's see. I'll take those out, put this in, and then it won't melt. Okay. So that's how you make a margarita. Easy, right? You guys are all still with me, I hope. Now, my favorite thing that I'm going to show you is how to make the Alfredo sauce. And while the Alfredo sauce is cooking, I'm going to show you and tell you about some of the other things that we've made. We're going to finish up this brownie mix that I think you're going to be so excited to try. Um, but how many of you have ever made a sauce on the stovetop? Or maybe you've made jelly on the stovetop before. You have to worry so much about burning that food. So you have to stay close by to stir because as it cooks, it starts to boil and you need to stir. So with our blender, you do not have to do the stirring and that keeps you from having to be right at the blender at all times. So you can start your food and then let it finish the process while you're doing something else, making something else to go with dinner, giving your kids a bath, whatever it is that you need to do, you can walk away from the blender and so I love that. So the recipe that I'm using as a guide today is the, um, it's under the sauce setting and that is on, let's see, page 30, is that right? This is an Alfredo sauce, 31. The Alfredo sauce recipe, I have made a couple of alterations and I will let you know what those are. Let's see, I'm gonna move this and then make a little more room here. I told you guys, I had so much that I had to prep for you. I need a couple more countertops. <laughs> All right, so this recipe calls for two cups of milk. We drink a ton of milk at this house, and because of that, we drink 1% milk. And so it's not as fattening as I would like for an Alfredo sauce. So I'm doing one cup of heavy cream and one cup of 1% milk. So this is the first stage. I'm gonna pour this in. Now the recipe says that we're gonna add a half a teaspoon of salt. But instead of salt, I'm gonna add a half a tablespoon, so a teaspoon and a half, of Pampered Chef's Garlic Parmesan Seasoning. So this may or may not be available depending on when you're watching this video. It launches September the 1st, 2022. I had to think about what year we were in. Um, literally, I'm trying to figure out how many bottles of this that I need to buy because 
my family, we, last night for dinner, we had this on the counter or on the table with us, and they were sprinkling it all over their food, over the garlic bread, um, which already had some of this on it, over their um, lasagna, over the pasta. I mean, it was literally like um, a condiment that you just shake over the food. So now that we're using it that way too and cooking with it, we're going to need a whole lot more. It is now my favorite Pampered Chef seasoning, and I cannot wait to buy a whole lot more. So that's all we're putting in here at the moment. Um, this is a multiple stage, so a two-stage recipe, and then there's an add-in, so we're going to get those things ready to go. I'm going to press cancel because this is a sauce recipe, and we're not using that custom blend. Um, I'm going to turn this, I want to make sure I was looking at that right, to the sauce setting, which is a default of 176 degrees. I'm going to press the button and let this do its thing. Now, I'm going to have to talk in between some of this blending but the blending is going to slow down. So what is happening is first, it was blending up the milk and that seasoning because that had, there's a temperature or a thermometer in there in this base. And it was trying to see what temperature is the contents that are in here right now. And it is 66 degrees. So the goal is to get it to 176 degrees. I don't know how well I'm gonna time this. Maybe we'll finish this on camera, maybe we won't. Um, we'll see how it goes. But this is going to just do this song and dance, blend and stir, blend and stir, for a while to get it to 176 degrees. So while we wait on that, we're gonna get the rest of the ingredients together. Now, in this bowl here, I have a quarter cup of flour. And I also have three tablespoons of butter. If you've ever made a roux before, then you're um, probably used to putting the butter in a skillet on the stovetop and adding in your flour, melting the butter, and just stirring and whisking in that flour. Well, we're going to make this roux in the microwave. So I'm going to set this aside because you don't need very much time. You're going to need, let's see, a total of a minute and a half, and you stir it every 30 seconds to make that roux, which is a thickener. That's how we're going to thicken up this sauce. And then we're gonna also add in some Parmesan cheese. So let's go ahead and shred our Parmesan cheese. And hopefully you guys aren't too distracted by the blender noise here. Um, it, it just kind of goes back and forth. And so it's a little bit of a slower process and different than the recipes I showed you already. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna use my juicer, but take the juicer out and add in my zester attachment here. And I'm gonna shred our Parmesan cheese there. So this container, holds um, two and a quarter cups, and this here says we need about two cups. So I like to store my cheese in these reusable silicone bags, and so I'm gonna pull out, I have Asiago and Parmesan, so we're gonna use Parmesan. So what I'm gonna do is just shred this cheese, and while I do that, um, I'm gonna tell you some of the other recipes that are on the same page that you're gonna find on the sauce section of this cookbook. So you can make chicken or beef gravy, and that uses um, chicken stock or beef stock. I'm checking my eyes here, I can't see it too far away. Um, you're gonna add in garlic, fresh sage, salt, and black pepper, and then you're gonna make a thickener of the, the flour and the butter, and there are no add-ins for that one after that. Then there's a sausage gravy recipe. So all of my um, southern friends that are watching, all my Georgia, Alabama folks, um, you guys know how to make sausage and gravy, but did you know that you could make it in your blender? <laughs> the next recipe is the Alfredo sauce, the sauce that I'm teaching you right now. And also on this page, you're gonna find instructions Try not to talk too much over the blender there. Um, instructions on how to make an ice cream base. So, um, oops, I got cheese everywhere. And this one is heavy whipping cream, whole milk, egg yolks, sugar, and vanilla extract. So if you've ever made homemade ice cream, then a lot of those custard-like recipes do have an egg base, and you need to cook it before you put it in the ice cream maker. And so this is just showing you how to make that in a base. So the next recipe is a hollandaise sauce. I will tell you I haven't made that before. I do not like hollandaise sauce, but if you do, it's a very simple recipe. It has um, lemon juice, water, egg yolks, um, butter, and salt, and then the add-in is a little bit more butter. And then the last recipe on the sauce section is hot chocolate. It's four cups of milk, um, brown sugar, 
and salt. All right, so I think we need just a tiny bit more cheese. And we do have cheese graters too, but I like this because it shreds it right into this container and it's pretty easy to use. It's dishwasher safe also. Um, now some of the other things that I've made for you guys, using the soft setting, I have to show you. Um, so let's finish shredding this cheese and then I will show you that. All right, so that's our cheese. I'll set this aside. That'll be for our Alfredo sauce. And then this will go back in the fridge. Let me clean up my workspace a little bit so I don't have a big mess here. <clears throat> All right, are you guys still with me? <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you have any questions for me. Oh, and I failed to tell you, but on um, in the sauce setting, I have cheese everywhere. <laughs> One of the main recipes, um, there are, let's see, on the next page, nacho cheese sauce. So you can make cheese dip like you would get at a Mexican restaurant using our deluxe cooking blender. It's really, really good. This one uses a blend of just cheddar cheese. Um, I usually like to do either Colby cheese or pepper jack cheese to make cheese sauce with that. So on the sauce setting, what I have here to show you guys is I made, let's see, make sure I'm not forgetting anything here. Oh yeah, I knew there was one more. So I have three things that I made on the sauce setting. So I made homemade caramel. Caramel, like I said, is one of Keith's favorite things that I make in the blender. It's brown sugar, heavy whipping cream, butter, and then that's the first stage. The second stage, when it beeps and says add, you're gonna add vanilla and salt, press that wheel again, and it's gonna finish cooking that caramel. This is homemade marinara. Normally I have fresh basil blended in here, but I didn't have any fresh basil. But the really good thing about that is when I'm ready to serve this, I can pour this back in the blender and add the fresh basil, give it a quick little blend and use it as, it, as if I had just made it that way. I like to freeze marinara so that I have it whenever I need it. And these make and take mason jars are freezer safe. And so this is still a little bit warm. I did put the lid on here, but I would recommend that you let this cool completely before you put the lid on and before you put it in your freezer. And I would say you could freeze it for up to six months and it would still be great. Um, I used my last one in the freezer just a few days ago. What did I make? Oh, I made ravioli lasagna, which is a new recipe from Pampered Chefs. So stay tuned for that one too. So this is homemade marinara, have caramel. And then this one, I'm gonna have to make some more of this because this is my last batch. Um, this is pizza sauce. So I guess I'm gonna have to make pizza soon because I left this thought out. Um, but this is fantastic. You make it in the deluxe cooking blender. That recipe, the caramel recipe, the marinara recipe, pretty much everything I've shared with you today is in my recipe community. So if you haven't joined yet, I don't know what you're waiting for, but make sure you go to theflipflopchef.com, click that button at the top, and then you'll be able to join my recipe community on Facebook. Thousands of recipes, hundreds of videos, and a, a giveaway every single Friday. So we have our marinara, our caramel, and then our pizza sauce. So let's talk a little bit more about these brownies. Are you guys excited about this? So these brownies, I have in our brand new rectangular baker coming soon to Pampered Chef September 1st. Um, and this recipe was shared with me from my friend Marta Ross. So Marta, if you're watching, hi. I appreciate you sharing with me and hope you enjoy this video if you are watching. So Marta shared this a little while ago on her Facebook page and I had to make it. So um, I took that container of peanuts, put it in the cooking blender on the grind setting and turned it into peanut butter. I have that peanut butter right here. Now, instead of putting the three cups of water and a drop of soap in the blender at that point, I added, go not tell my family this, okay? Your secrets have to be, my secrets have to be safe with you. <laughs> a can of black beans. I didn't drain them. I just opened them up and poured them in the blender. Don't tell anybody, okay? Because if they knew black beans were in here, they would not even eat it. And that goes for Keith too. So maybe he won't watch this video. <laughs> and then you add in a brownie mix. This is the one I had in my pantry. So I tossed the brownie mix in. I scraped down the sides. I blended it for a minute, scraped down the sides. And I'll bring this over here. Clearly I have forgot to turn off all my alarms. And don't worry, Keith is picking up the kids from school. So they're not just sitting there waiting on me. Um, but you're gonna put your brownie mix in and just blend it, scrape down the sides, blend it a little bit more until it's nice and smooth and there are no, no signs 
of black beans. Now I'm hoping I can still uh, pour this peanut butter and run it through, but we're not gonna use all of it, but we're gonna take this silicone bowl. This is the two cup, so it comes with three, a one cup, a two cup, and a three cup. They all have their own lids. These are microwave safe, oven safe, dishwasher safe, freezer safe, they are great. And by the way, this is a silicone bowl that we no longer sell, so I don't want you guys to go, hey, what bowl did you put the pizza sauce in? How can I get it? Those are one cup bowls. We don't sell those anymore, but I love them. All right, so I'm gonna pour over the top. Remember I said when I made that peanut butter that it was pourable? This is what I meant. If you don't want it pourable, don't blend it so long. I did the full two minutes and 20 seconds on that. Now I'm gonna take a knife and I'm just gonna run this knife through. And this brownie mix has kind of been sitting here for a minute, so it got kind of thick. Whoops. Mine is not going to be as pretty as Marna's, but hopefully it'll taste good, right? Okay, so I have my oven. If y'all aren't watching, I would totally lick that off the knife. Um, we're going to put this in the oven, preheated at 350 for 25 minutes. So hang tight. Let me put this in the oven. Let me grab a timer. Oops. I love Camper Chef's clock timer because it has a clock on it, but it has four timers, which is so cool. So timer one minute, and then I'm just going to add 25. Oh, I did 26. That's okay. Um, go. There we go. So it's counting down, and we'll check on those brownies when they are done. And that will probably be off camera because I don't have enough left to tell you guys to keep you for that much longer. So I'm sure you guys are like, this is the longest video ever, but I hope that you have learned a lot and hope that you are getting some great ideas. I'm looking around to make sure that I have not forgot anything important. I do want to tell you some of the other things that you can make on the blender. And right now we're at 127 degrees. So at this point I'm feeling like I'll finish this off camera and um, make the roux, which is the thickener, add that in and um, press the start button. Let me make sure I'm telling you right. Yes, and press the start button so that it finishes. When it's totally finished, I'm going to add in that Parmesan cheese and just blend it long enough for the cheese to melt. And then I have Alfredo sauce ready to go for dinner tonight. I could do a chicken Alfredo with garlic Parmesan on my chicken. I'll grill that up in the deluxe grill and griddle. If you don't know how to do that, be sure to watch my deluxe grill and griddle class and you'll be able to see how to do that there as well. All right, some of the other things that I have made, um, I don't think I went over this list earlier. If I did, you're gonna get it a second time. Um, I tried to go through um, a lot of the things that I've made that I don't have here to show you just to make sure that you guys understand all of the different things that you can do with this blender. Um, so on the sauce setting, I think I probably use the sauce setting maybe more than anything else. Um, you can make curd, so like lemon curd, orange curd, pineapple curd. I did a raspberry lemon curd, borrow my um, cheat sheet here. Um, I also have made cranberry sauce, so if you serve cranberry sauce on Thanksgiving, you can make that in your cooking blender, and there's several different variations that you can make. Um, you can make eggnog in here, I have done that. It, I don't like eggnog, but I made it and shared it with somebody who loves eggnog, and they said it was fantastic, so I'm gonna trust them on that. I'm not a huge, I, I'll eat scrambled eggs, but I'm not a huge fan of custards and um, egg base. I like ice cream that's custard based, but not much of anything else, and it depends on the ice cream <laughs> if I like it. Um, I've made chocolate sauce, very similar to how I made the caramel sauce. Um, sweet and sour sauce. So if you're buying all these sauces at the store, you don't know what all the ingredients are. When you're buying things pre-made that have preservatives in them, you can make the sauces that you need as you need them. Um, ketchup. So I don't know how long ago it was, maybe a year ago, there was a shortage of ketchup. Ever since COVID, um, we've experienced, experienced shortages of all kinds, and ketchup was one of those shortages. So we learned how to make ketchup in the blender. Um, I have made the most delicious vanilla syrup for waffles and pancakes in here and I do have a video if you find the brunch video where I feature the deluxe grill and griddle I'll show you how to make it um, and then the nacho cheese sauce I did talk to you guys about that earlier um, and then I didn't mention this today but also on my channel you're going to see how you can juice um, fruit in your blender that's a huge question probably the top two questions I get from my uh, can I use do this in my blender 
is can I use it as a regular blender and can I juice in it? So the, the short answer is yes, you can use it as a juicer, but you will also need to, in most cases, unless you want the pulp, then you're going to need to strain the juice in this bag. So I've made pineapple juice, I've made apple juice, and then turned the apple juice into apple jelly. Um, I have made orange juice, trying to think of what other juices that I have made, but you're gonna add a little bit of water, blend it up, pour it through the straining bag, just like you would the nut milk, and then you're ready to go. So we're at 142 degrees. We're not gonna make it to the 176 together on camera, but I will finish up this sauce. All of these recipes will be in my recipe community so that you can check them out. You can make them yourself, but for this Alfredo sauce, we'll add the grilled chicken with garlic parmesan seasoning. We will add um, fettuccine noodles and then maybe make some bread with garlic parmesan seasoning. So, in fact, I have some leftover cheesy bread that I made that we'll serve with that tonight. You could add some steamed broccoli if you wanted to. It's totally up to you. My family will pick it up, but I like to eat it, so I like to make things the way I'm going to eat them, and hopefully they can accommodate themselves by removing that, right? Raise your hand if you're like that. All right, you guys, as always, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you learned a lot, and I hope that you're excited to use the Deluxe Cooking Blender if you already have one. And if you don't have one, I would love the opportunity to be your consultant and help you get one. Um, you can click the shop buttons on all of my pages, or you can just send me a personal message, and I'd be more than happy to help you. So that's all I have for you guys today. I'll see you next time. Bye now.